done in the past week to make sure that the same thing doesn't happen? Uh, I'm not. Uh, we've been practicing hard, and uh, yeah, we've been practicing harder, communicating more. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> How do you make sure that you communicate in practice versus a real game? Mm. <clears throat> uh, can you repeat that? What's the biggest difference between trying to communicate in a practice environment versus a real game where it can get loud? Obviously, like, not in Lambo, but yeah. just the difference in that. Yeah, uh, since we're playing home, it's going to be a louder game. Uh, so communication will be uh, pivotal. So, you know, we're just back to the drawing boards and just, you know, making sure that their playmakers do not make the plays that they can make. What were the communication breakdowns that needed to be cleaned up this um, I think that um, I think we all just need to get on one page, the same page, you know. We need to get on one accord. I think we've done a better job this week, so we'll see how the you know how it goes on Sunday. The communication breakdowns for its own. Is it just a matter of not knowing who is responsible for which areas? And how does, how does that happen? Uh, you know, communication has been better this week. And, uh, you know, hopefully we look to make a big improvement on Sunday. Do you have any individual goals for yourself this coming game? Uh, nah. Mm -mm. What about for the defense in general? Defense, yeah, I want to shut out, you know. I would be excited with the shutout. I'd be, like, super happy because, you know, it's been a lot of talk about the defense. So, you know, I just want us to be on top. Jared, what kind of... Uh, complications does a quarterback like Justin Fields present? I know he's very, very mobile, but as part of a secondary, what does he do that you guys have to be constantly aware? Yeah, he um, he does a good job extending the plays. Um, we have to we have to be good with standing on our receivers for like 10 seconds, you know? Normal plays are like 4 to 6 seconds, but he's able to extend it to like 10 seconds. So. How does that make it more difficult for a defense? <sighs> Well, a lot of times uh, the receivers, you know, they run their initial route, and then with a scrambling quarterback, you know, he run, they run a different route. So they're running like two or three different routes during one play. So um, that's what makes it harder to defend a scrambling quarterback. We always talk to Rodgers about scramble drill rules for receivers. Is it, are there scramble drill, drill, drill rules for corners as well, like things that you got to do when the plays do get extended? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, we're taught to kind of like, you know, if he's out the pocket, we're able to push the receiver out of bounds. So that's like our biggest help. You know, when he scrambles, uh, if we push the receiver out of bounds, he can't catch the ball. You know, he can't be the first to touch it. So that's like the biggest scramble rule for us. Is there like an internal clock that goes off? Do you use your eyes to see when he's out of bounds? Or do you know after so, so long, he's likely out? Yeah, a lot of times they're like real close to the edge line. So it's real easy to see them there. And, um, you know, you just give them a real hard shove out of bounds and then it's over with. What does this rivalry mean to you over the past two years? You've gotten some great tastes of it. How fun is this rivalry? Uh, I mean, it's fun. It's exciting. I always say, you know, things could be a lot worse. I could be a Bears fan, you know. <laughs> but, uh, you know, this has always been fun playing against them because I know it's always like a good game. So. What do you think is the biggest thing you need to focus on on defense, just based off of what you've seen from them in week one? Hmm. We have to stay on our receivers, like, the whole time. That's the biggest thing. And 32 is a good running back, and we have to respect him as well, and number 11 is really fast. Is it hard to prep for a game when there's so much weather as a factor? I mean, he was doing a lot of scrambling, but is it hard for you guys to prep? Uh, no. Nah. No, I just kind of watch the game like eight times and just kind of like, that's it. I just watch the game a bunch and just kind of see how their receivers are, if they want to block or if they want to, you know, do anything, uh, you know, how they routes are, basically. Is eight the average amount of times that you watch a game before you prep? Uh, not usually, but I watch this game a lot of times just to prepare, extra prepare. There's been a lot of talk all offseason about who you, you three corners are collectively. As talented as you guys are, would you like to play more man? Uh, you know, I think um, 
I think zone helps as well. You know, it's good to mix in zone. Um, me myself, I like to I like to play man. I like to play man a bunch. You know, like Sue. I think Sue likes to play zone a lot. So, you know, so likes to play man. So, um, you get a good combination of both when it's necessary. So I, I'm okay with either one. What do you like about man? Uh, I'm just, I know that I have this guy, you know. I know for a fact that I have this receiver. And, um, you know, in 2018, I was, like, following. So it, I knew that that was my guy, basically, you know. Is it simpler? Is it man simpler? Yeah, it's much, much simpler. Yeah, it's much simpler because you know that's your man, you know. Can't go nowhere without you. Uh, we just got to communicate better in zone coverage, you know, because that was the biggest breakdown then. We just have to communicate better. There were a few guys on the defense who were saying it feels like you guys kind of have to go out and prove something on Sunday. Are you the type that feels like there's something to prove about during that one? I mean, I think for our defense, you know, we should kind of have that mindset, you know, like, you know, just to quiet everybody down. Um, but I'm like... I try to stay consistent and just do what I always do, you know. So I, I'm not really in the proving, but I'm just going to keep doing what I'm doing, you know. But as a defense, I think that, you know, got a little target on our back to, to step it up this week. You've been through many of these before, but just having this home opener in front of the crowd of green and gold, what does that mean? Oh, it's going to be lit. I just hope everybody's just drinking all day. So come come game time is just super loud and just amazing, you know. Yeah, it's fire. I always like home games at Lambeau, especially the season opener. And then I hope that the defense, you know, they do the defensive intros, so you know I can come out the tunnel and just feel the energy. John, when you talk about man versus zone, uh, those of us that are really old around here remember when Charles Woodson and Al Harris were here. And they were great at man, but they would both tell you that you have more opportunities to get interceptions in zone. Is that the upside of playing zone? And, and do you have to kind of view positives and the negatives of those two things when you kind of consider it? Yes, yes, definitely. Yep. So yep, I think it's more, you, you definitely get more opportunities at the ball in zone. Yeah. Better for run defense, maybe two, because your eyes are in the backfield more than yes. shattering the receiver. Right? Yes, yes. <laughs> when you um, when you talk about communication this week, was it player to player on the field, or was there a component of player to coach talking about what you guys want to do and what you'd like to do? If that was part of it, how did that go? Yeah, I think uh, this week was more like player to coach and then player to player, you know? So, you know, I think that. Um, this week, our focus was just like much more narrow, you know. The coaches like were on to on us all week, honestly, you know. It's not really a good feeling. It's like uh, leave me alone, you know. But but um, I understand it. But you know. Did you communicate your thoughts the same way that you did oh, yeah. them last week, or did you think you did a better job of letting uh, Joe and others know exactly what you nope. want to do? I told everybody how I felt. The uncomfortable conversations are needed, but uh, you know we are all on the same page now. Is that your role to do that? Yeah. Make sure that your voice is heard. Ah, uh, you know, it is what it is. I just kind of go with how I feel. There's nothing predetermined. I just, you know, if I feel the type of way about something, I can't just hold it in. You know, I can't let it sit. So I just, you know, I communicated with them how I felt. And um, with my, you know, with some of the, my teammates, and that was that. So it sounds like communication was really key this week, both on and off the field. Yep. Yep. So with all that said about how you felt, you can't keep in how you feel. How'd you feel? How do I feel? When? What, with what you communicated. Oh, no. You know, it is what it is. You know, like. I just want to make sure I'm here for the team. You know, if they, if I, if I, you know, get an easier week, you know, week off, cool. You know, I, you know, it is what it is. But, you know, I just want to make sure I'm here for the team, and I don't want it to <clears throat> be misconstrued that like 
you know, it's about me or anything because, you know, it's not. Just throughout the entire training camp, the quarterback group and really secondary, the backs, you guys are all so, like, jokey, funny, lively. Was it still that way this week? Or were you guys like, okay, we got to get serious? Or is that your way of working and working through things? Mm, yeah, no, nah, I mean, everybody's... Everybody's pretty much the same, you know. Everybody's the same. I'm the same. I'm always the same. I approach practice as if it was a game, so, you know. Everybody's the same. I don't think anybody changed, you know. 